Hey everyone, I'm coming to you a little bit earlier than the usual time. It's 5.45 oh, it's five forty-five a.m. in Sydney on Tuesday morning, but it's the school holiday, so I've got the little ones coming to me at the usual time, at 9 a.m. my time, so I thought, hey, why don't I just get up early and have a chat with everyone? So, yeah, if you're just tuning in, let us know where you are from in the chat. It's around about, I think about 4 p.m., 3 p.m. in the US. So it's a Monday for you guys. If you're in the UK, I know it's going to be the middle of the night. If you're in Australia, yeah, it's kind of early. So the usual people are probably still sleeping. Anyway, here we are. Uh, I can see there's a few people have tuned in already. Uh, Elena from Louisiana. Happy birthday. Starting carnival tomorrow with a friend. Going straight into it from SAD. Any tips on how to minimize sickness in the beginning? I like it. Like, you know what? I did hardcore as well. And uh, it's not, you know, I guess you get it over and done with that transition period quicker this way. I think you've just got to see how it goes. Uh, if you have IBS already, I also had IBS. And the, one, the, the thing that disappeared very quickly was the IBS. So I didn't have full blown IBS, but eliminating plants especially really helped me. And I have zero bowel issues and I'm very, very happy about that. Now there will be a transition period because you're going to be, if you, depending on how much, what sort of diet you had, how much fat you used to eat before, um, your gut microbiome is going to have to reconstruct itself uh, into a healthier state. So yeah, just like take it easy on you, on yourself and don't get too upset if you are feeling a bit off color, but it will pass. And I think the first two weeks, if you are going straight from the standard American diets over to carnivore is the worst, and then it gets better from there. And many people report a really easy transition and start feeling a whole lot better uh, straight away. So good luck, keep in touch. Tracy Kinzel, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Melissa. thank you. Morning to you in Alaska. It's 11.45 a.m. Isn't this a nice time to actually sit down and have a chat? Yes, I know you. I remember you're in Texas, Tracy. Uh, Susan Hampton, hello. Welcome. Who else have we got? Uh, oh, Becky, Carnivore Dog Sitter Becky. Such a great supporter of the channel. Hello. Welcome. I'm just going to allow a couple more minutes for people to tune in because the... Uh, I thought today I'd just talk about how much fat should you eat on carnivore. Now, I'll just preface this by saying I am not a medical doctor. I am not a trained nutritionist, anything like that. I'm just a person who has moved over to the carnivore diet about 100 days ago, and I'm just speaking about my experience here. So this is not medical advice. The usual disclaimers uh, apply. And in any case, even if you do watch what medical doctors say on YouTube, that's not medical advice either because it's outside of the purview of their usual... Um, the way that their license operates. They can provide telemedicine with some of their licenses, but here on YouTube, well, you know, it's just about free speech. That's all it is. Uh, Mike Shaw TV, thanks for tuning in. Can't remember seeing you before. Must be a different, a better time for you. 3.48 p.m. in South Carolina. It's such a cool sounding name, that place. Uh, 2.49 in Iowa. Ah, oh, it's your second one. All right, must have missed you the last time. Well, welcome. All right, so I thought what I'd firstly do is, I, th I just think this is an interesting discussion, the whole fat thing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit fascinated by it. I especially like uh, this, uh, Kelly Hogan is one that talks a lot about fat. And also as far as doctors go, Dr. Ben Bickman, who's a real expert when it comes to fat. I just wanna share my screen here uh, where are we? I'll share this tab. So I just roughly put down what I consumed yesterday. And this is what I, uh, just so I could see roughly the amount of fat that I consumed. So I had 400 grams of bacon. So in Australia, we have these 750 gram packets of bacon. I usually go through like a little over half of that. So there's 80 grams of fat. I had four eggs with that. That was another 20 grams. So I had about a tablespoon of butter. That was 12 grams. A few slices of cheese. That was 16. And then last night, probably a bit more chicken than I would normally eat. I was fuller than usual. Uh, that was the three quarters of a whole chicken, 40 grams. So 168 grams in total. Now, 
I, I, that, that, that is pretty typical, I'd say a typical day for me and my body handles that uh, completely fine. So that's just, that's just one example of what one person consumes fat wise every day on average. Uh, let's see who we, else we had here. I saw somebody just duck in there quickly. Mandy, Mandy, you're in the UK. Oh, it's 9 PM for you. Excellent. Well, it's a bit easier it, if I do the 9 a.m. 9 a.m. my time. I think it's getting a bit too late for you guys probably. Who else have we got? Slipknot fan. I think I saw you mention on Homestead House stream. Yes, probably. That was thinking of adding fruit into your carnival diet. No, that wasn't actually me. I have no plans to add fruit. If you want to add fruit, you do you. That's all I can say. I know Paul Saladino talks about his experience and his experience was that he was feeling lethargic and when he added back in things like honey and some fruit, that worked for him. And, you know, if you've been following the, the carnival protocol for a while and it's something you want to try, well, try it out. I encourage people wholeheartedly to experiment. I don't think you need to be like absolutely dogmatic about carnival. And if you are, that's also fine too. Um, but for me personally, if I have, uh, I'm doing just fine without fruits and veggies. And I find that if I do introduce something, it tends to irritate my bowel a bit. So I'm completely happy to be without it. That's just my perspective. I love this name, Beef for Cat for Tuna. <laughs> Happy man. If you were truly worried, you could try fast first. You could try not overling on plants day before you get carnival to minimize oxalate dumping. Yeah, I think that's reasonable advice. Um, let's see, you had just three lovely fatty burger patties with some butter. I was going to have your favorite meal, but I'll wait till Jerry gets home tomorrow and make us a nice big rod special. What is my favorite meal? Oh, is it bacon eggs? I think that's that's pretty much my favorite meal. All right, so I've got this, I've got this clip here from... Dr. Chafee, which I want to play for you guys. And he just talks about the fat and the role of fat. If you miss it, just rewind. And I will bring this up now and play. And then fat, how much fat is enough? Well, I like to go by taste, first and foremost. If it tastes good, you know, listen to that. Also, I like to go by your stools. It's a very easy way to see if you're getting enough fat or not. Your body absorbs fat using bile, okay? It's very hard for your body to absorb fat if you don't have bile, okay? Bile emulsifies the fat and allows your body to absorb it, all right? Your body can absorb some fat, you know, and usually like you know, mid-chain fatty acids uh, uh, without bile, but, but a very small degree, you know? There, this, is, this is just in you know, physiology textbooks, you know, that this is just, this is how this process works. So most of the fat that you eat uh, after you run out of bile will actually just go out in your in your waist okay so you, you're not going to really run into problems eating too much fat because you're so isn't that interesting i didn't actually know that if you could over consumed fat that you, it would actually just like be disposed of anyway that is a fact that i did not realize before uh, and it's just something for if you are starting if you're starting carnival from scratch it's just something to bear in mind that if you are consuming a lot more fat than you used to, then it doesn't need to be that big of a concern and you'll notice if you are. You're not gonna absorb it. You're only gonna absorb a small percentage of the too much fat, okay? Unless you're doing something uh, silly like taking ox bile or something like that because that's gonna force you to absorb more uh, than your body is actually asking for. So unless you have a problem which requires ox bile, like you don't have a gallbladder anymore and you want to eat a big meal at one time, okay, well, maybe I would I could see making an exception, but really what you should do if you don't have a gallbladder is just eat multiple times during the day uh, to space out those fatty meals. And some people make a pseudo gallbladder and actually works as a normal gallbladder so they can just eat normally, okay? So just what he mentioned there about a pseudo gallbladder, uh, it, I'm not sure if you know about this, but for those who've had their gallbladder removed, the human body, isn't the human body amazing? It can actually reconstruct part of your uh, intestine to create a pseudo gallbladder, which is a place where bile is stored. And that's the, that's the function of the gallbladder. It stores bile and then releases it uh, so that fat can be emulsified. And even after your gallbladder is removed, some people actually end up making a new one of their own. <laughs> isn't that amazing? So if you're not taking ox bile or something like that, you can just you know, uh, you, you won't absorb more than your body has bile for, which I think means that's more than your body wants, okay? A little bit, but not much. The rest of that goes out, okay? So it's that little bit extra that gets in your stools and, and makes them soft, okay? So if you, if you have hard, dry stools and are constipated, 
then that means that you're absorbing every ounce of fat that you're eating and it's very, very dry and hard, okay? When you are constipated, that's when it's dry and hard. You're gonna absorb 98 to 99% of the meat that you eat anyway, so you're just gonna be going far less often. Don't worry that you're not, you're, you're not going more than, you know, once every couple of days or once a week, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you go when there's waste to, to get out, okay? If you're eating a whole bunch of uh, non-digestible fiber, and, you know, same as if you're eating, you know, chunks of plastic, you can't digest it, you can't absorb it, so it has to go out. So you're just having this stuff to come out all the time, and we're just used to this stuff coming out all the time. We think that that's normal. It's not normal, okay? That's your body just trying to get this stuff out of you because it's not good for you, okay? So if it's dry and hard, that means you need to increase the fat. If it's soft and a normal consistency, well, that means you're getting just the right amount of fat. You're getting all the fat that your body wants uh, from the bile and a little bit extra. So you, you know you just topped yourself off with the fat, right? And then the rest of this goes into the into the stools and that keeps it soft. If you need a lot more, then that's gonna be, um, uh, that's gonna come out, you know, quicker, right? It's gonna, you're gonna get loose stools. And that, that's one of the common causes of loose stools in uh, carnivore is, is way too much, way more fat than your body can absorb, right? Uh, it can also be because people still drink coffee or still use artificial sweeteners, especially the, you know, anything ending in OSE. So uh yeah artificial sweetness <laughs> that's that's definitely my nemesis i've noticed that i'm way less tolerant of especially erythritol so he's talking about things like sucralose and other things that end, ends with ose but for me if i have something that's got a reasonable amount of erythritol in it and i've talked about the little tub of ice cream on my videos that i used to have like every night after work and i found that that would just give me the runs straight away very and not just the runs like super violent. So I <laughs> just stopped, stopped eating that altogether. Let's just continue. So it was a sucralose, um, you know, and uh, all the different, uh, uh, you know, alcohol sugars. These things cause diarrhea, plain and simple. And so, you know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll get diarrhea when they first start carnival. Like, oh my God, I have this horrible, horrible shit. And it's just like, yeah, well, you know, are you still drinking coffee? Are you using artificial sweeteners? Uh, Quite often the answer is yes, and coffee will absolutely move things along, all right? If you are not doing that, if you're only eating fat, the likelihood is you're eating, uh, or you're only eating meat and, and, and drinking water, the likelihood is, is that you're eating more fat than your body can absorb. Just pull it back. Just pull back the fat, and, uh, and, and you'll be fine, okay? All right, thank you, Dr. Chafee, for your uh, surprise appearance. Um, well, let's see, you are editing videos this week. Well, I can't wait to see that. I think it's about time. I think you'll have a, you'll have a channel that will absolutely blow up. I'm, I've got no doubt about that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you got. And yes, you're cooking bacon and eggs. Mike Shaw TV, loving your steaks. I like steaks too. I find because I've got so many children to feed here, I don't often actually have steaks. So I, I look at the... Um, at the uh, cost of the steak and then I go okay I can get two kilograms of ground beef for eleven dollars I'm gonna go to the ground beef and make the rissoles make patties it just <laughs> goes so much further for me but you know in more prosperous times I will definitely be eating a lot more steaks because I enjoy them too so you added sausage and chorizo great and yeah still couldn't eat as much as I thought I would yeah interesting is it a texture thing <laughs> smash butter burger <laughs> that sounds epic uh, let me guess smash butter burger i think you maybe you've told us what that actually is i'm guessing it's ground beef mixed up with butter uh, what else who else have we got here <laughs> mike sure all right let me just see if we've got anybody else that's actually dropped in uh one hope for all yeah i Erythritol used to be my thing. I used to have that, a teaspoon of that in my coffee in the morning. And that was every morning for every, maybe, maybe that's quantity I could tolerate. Uh, but then it all came down to sweet things. So for me to eliminate addiction to sweet things, I had to eliminate the erythritol anyway. And so I just switched to putting butter in my coffee and then that was it. Uh, Becky, don't know how to edit. It doesn't matter. If you can, if you've got a phone, either an iPhone or an Android phone, use a program called 
uh, either CapCut, C-A-P-C-U-T, or VN. So it's just V for Victor, N for November. They're two really easy editors that you can use on your phone. And uh, there's also a number of tutorials on YouTube. If you just search for VN tutorial or CapCut tutorial, and in no time, you'll be competent enough to be able to use those programs to actually edit your videos. And you don't need to make it fancy. I, I think that if you are wanting to you know, share some of your journey via YouTube, like a lot of us do, then that's a good place to start. And you know, all the YouTube shorts that I have on my channel, every one of those has been edited in VN and shot on my iPhone, and then that's it. That's the only thing. So it's, it's not necessarily a difficult thing, but of course there is going to be a learning curve with anything new that you do. So I encourage you to give it a go. Uh, a lot of curse words mixed with laughter, but yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> you should include those. That'll make it more entertaining for sure. Uh, I cut, Susan, I cut my chuck into cubes, then pop it in the air fryer for six minutes to get love your air state bites. That is such a good way to quickly cook tasty steak. I do the same thing with um, pork belly. So the pork belly bites, got that recipe on my channel as well. Susan, yeah, you absolutely have to get an air fryer. It's a one of the best, in, I think the, the best investments that you can make for in the kitchen. I would even put the pressure cooker ahead of that because like for example, I just, there was no more uh, chicken Drum, I like to buy chicken legs occasionally from Aldi. They had completely run out. All they had was the whole chickens. So I just get the whole chicken, chuck that in the pressure cooker, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion powder. Excuse me, I'm still getting over a cold. And uh, some salt, a cup of water, whack the lid on, set it to the chicken setting, which means that it cooks for about 15 minutes. And it's done. And it's so tender. So tasty. So you can do pretty much any cut of meat in the pressure cooker. And I find that's, if you just want to do something quickly and very conveniently, it's great. Now, if you like to, um, the air fryer is just, you know, it's great with browning things. So it just takes a little bit longer, but it does a really good job as well. Rhonda Townsend, hello. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I know it's a bit earlier than usual, but I appreciate you showing up. Uh, who else have we got here that's just tuned in? Yeah, you've got an instant pot. Yep, yep. You use it a lot, do you, Susan? Ninja XL 6-in-1. Yeah, I if I didn't already have a pressure cooker, I would definitely have had a look at one of those, but the one I've got actually does the job really well. So you use the air fryer to fry eggs, Melissa. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the other thing about the uh, the Instapot or the pressure cooker is so easy to clean up. You just have one bowl, that's it, and it's non-stick, so it's just super easy to clean. I've got to give my air fryer a pretty decent clean because I've got one of those big ones that's got racks on it, and I made an absolute mess of it one time, so I've got to fix that. Oh, you do eggs on the stove, right. Okay, yeah, I do eggs in the pan too. I have seen people do eggs in the air fryer, although I sort of think that's like... Are more fiddly than just doing it in the pan. The other thing I discovered with my small children is that they really like eggs, fried eggs, when they're fried in loads of fat. So now what I do when I make bacon eggs, when I've got the little ones, is I add in some lard first. I cook the bacon, especially if those nice fatty strips of bacon. Oh, that's so good. If I have those, then I have a lot of fat in the pan and then throw the eggs in after that and it just makes them so nice and like crispy crunchy and they just like the the taste of that and the consistency of that so that gets them to eat a lot more eggs than what they normally would and they also really like boiled eggs but they just will not eat the yolks if i make boiled eggs they still refuse to eat the yolks rat bags so i end up eating a whole lot of yolks but if i do uh we call it flat eggs so if we get the the fried egg and then I just break the yolk and then just sort of stir it around. So it's like a flat, <laughs> a flat piece of egg. They will eat all of that. So that's a way I can get them to eat uh, egg yolks as well. Yeah, for roast loin pork chops. 
Yes, they're all really good in the air fryer. The uh, pork loin roast in the air fryer is especially good. Where does everyone store their eggs? In the States, we put them in the fridge. Yeah, in, well, it's interesting. Yeah, in Australia, I think everyone would store their eggs in the fridge. However, when you buy them at the supermarket, they're actually, they're not in the fridge section. They just, um, well, at least in Aldi, they're in, a, in their own section, but not refrigerated. In other supermarkets, they do refrigerate them. So I guess they must be able to keep for quite a while out of the fridge. Never really thought about that. It's just the place where I keep them because I've got nowhere else to... That sort of makes sense. You know, it's good to have the eggs and the bacon all together in one place. Wow. Mike Shaw TV. Uh, Melissa, in Alaska, you've got our eggs up here. It's almost $12 for a dozen. Yeah. Is that just for the basic, like, cage-free ones? So in here in Australia, we can get the, the cage-free ones or even free range around about $4.60 Australian which would be around about $3.50 US. So they are, yeah, that's definitely a staple in my household because it's a pretty inexpensive and very high quality bit of nutrition. Yeah, it sounds like that's about the sort of standard price. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd buy 100 at that price. Yeah, well, when I, when I buy eggs, well, I have a shelf, a dedicated shelf on the fridge and I can fit, I think, seven dozen on the shelf. So, yeah, that's what I do when I top it up. And when I've got all four kids with me, we easily go through a dozen eggs in a day, easily. Melissa, do I eat fish or seafood at all? No, I haven't done fish. And in fact, there's a really easy one. So I, we do occasionally buy the salmon, frozen salmon pieces from Aldi. Um, so you can get like, I think it's a two kilogram bag. It's about $22. So it's not an inex... Oh, actually, that works out. Maybe it's not two kilos. I don't know. Anyway, so that's really good. And I think I heard um, Anita from uh, Ketogenic Woman talk about this particular meal. And I'd forgotten this is one that I do. So my older son, Ethan, he actually likes to do this. So we get the piece, like, directly frozen, straight... Oh, no. Sometimes he will... No, I think it, we, we thaw it out... So we take the pieces out because they're individually wrapped also in plastic within the larger plastic bag. And then we just uh, put them in water, just, just room temperature water. And that very quickly thaws them out in about 10 minutes, M mostly thawed out. And then straight in the air fryer, uh, a cold air fryer at 405, cooked for 10 minutes and they come out perfect with crispy skin. So yeah, I do need to actually record him doing that because that's a really quick and easy meal and it's really it tastes really good really really good uh one hope for all i asked if they could use ghee or butter instead they said they throw the steak on the flat top i said fine there was seasoning on the steak i bet something with msg i've got a headache yeah some people really react badly to msg my mum is one of those people she's even a sniff of msg and she does not feel good as long as they haven't been washed, you can keep them out. Ah, oh, there you go. I wonder how you tell if they've been washed or not. I didn't know that that was a thing. Anyone have luck with a dehydrator? Always tastes great when it's still a little hot, but loses a lot once it gets cold. Tried, tried a lot of different cuts and ways of cooking drink without a lot of success. Yeah, so my, um, my second oldest son, Jacob, he likes to cook. So what we do is we get steak, like rump, a cheap cut, like rump steak or even... Uh, brisket and then partially freeze it cut it in as thin slices and there's a dehydrator setting in the air fryer and I think a lot of air fryers have this and they come out great they just don't last very long they just disappear straight away <laughs> everybody really likes it beef for cat for tuna unwashed eggs can last for a long time out of the fridge if they've been washed then they need to be in the fridge right this is something I didn't know. This is what I love about this community is that everyone's got these little bits of knowledge that we all get to learn from, which I did not realize. Uh, Rhonda Townsend, you're new. Welcome. From CA, which is California. Sub to Carnival Dog Sitter, Becky's channel. I'm pretty sure I subbed to your channel too, Becky, just the other day. Carnival Ron. Welcome, you buy eggs at $6 for a 60 count. Wow, 60. 
So that works out to be like, like a dollar twenty-five in a dozen. That's amazing. Where do you get that from? Is that from Costco or something? Uh, Susan, eggs got ridiculous, but have come down regular eggs, 36 eggs straight. Wow, that's, <laughs> you guys are so lucky. I thought I was getting eggs cheap, but that's, that's incredible. 18 for 352, wow. <laughs> Melissa, you guys are killing me with your egg prices. Absolutely, yeah. So, a bit more advice from Melissa here. Try with, so flank steak. I don't know what, we, I don't think we call that flank steak here in, Australia, I'm not sure what we actually call it. So cut against the grain, yep, in about one inch thick strips and even three weeks later. Yeah, that seems interesting. So many different ways that you can, so many different things you can do with a dehydrator if you've got one and you've got the patience to actually make it happen. Uh, beef for cat for tuna. I love picana with a fat cat. Then I asked the butcher from cut off beef fat, super cheap to buy fat here in the US, I cut the fat cap into chunks and air fry them. Some pieces of meat taste like bacon. Yeah, that's really good. One time I went to the butcher and I asked for some mince with, uh, made out of, from off cuts and they looked at me weird. <laughs> like, why would you want that for? But it was so fatty, it was so good. They still charged me and I'm in a leak for it though, which so I didn't go back again. Carnival Ron, my local area at farmers markets eggs sell for six dollars a dozen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well that's understandable. Direct from the uh, farm is going to be more expensive than buying from the places that buy millions of eggs at a time, I guess. So here's the explanation of flank steak. Thank you, Melissa. It's a cut of beef steak taken from the abdominal muscles of the cow located just. Wow, you're a, you're a real guru on this, aren't you? Located just behind the plate and in front of the rear quarter. It's a long flat cut with a significant grain. All right, something to keep an eye out for. <laughs> you agree with Envy about the eggs. So what, um, I mean, originally I wanted to talk about fat. We can talk about whatever you like. If you've got any questions, just throw them up into the chat, put a queue in front of them, just so I can pull them out of the comments. Um, <laughs> Susan, during the pandemic, wow, Walmart's box of 60 eggs was $15. That's like, in terms of Australian prices, that's still a really good deal. If I saw 60 eggs for 15, I would jump at the chance. We just don't have that here. I think the most amount of eggs I've ever seen in a box is 18. That's as much as you can get. And that, when we see that in the shops, we go, wow, that's pretty amazing. That's bulk, but I guess that's, we don't have uh, Walmart. Well, we do have Costco, but the nearest Costco for me is about 45 minutes away. It's just not worth the drive unless I'm prepared to go and you know, fill my car up and then subsequently my fridge. Yeah, so what uh, what would you say is your fat intake like? Do you tend to go, ha has your fat intake changed over time if you've just started carnivore? Do you tend to eat more fat or less fat? <clears throat> I've found that mine has pretty, been pretty consistent, but I've definitely, uh, I think my, my, no, actually my fat increase is in, my fat intake has increased because I'm a bit more liberal with the fat that I put in the pan when I'm cooking bacon and eggs. Like I'm not, I, I used to shy away a little bit from having too much fat, but now once I understood how, <laughs> how nutritious it is and how valuable it is, then yeah, I just load up on it. And the more that I do that, I my body just seems to handle that really well. And I've got loads of energy doesn't cause me any problems. I know with some people, they need to adjust the macros a little bit. And the other thing I will point out is that I don't actually, like I've made the little document there for those who missed it, I'll just share it again. So I just had a look at what my fat consumption was uh, yesterday, but I, I don't actually track macros or calories or anything. And that's the beauty of the carnivore diet. You don't need to do that. You can just eat until you are satisfied and just listen to what your body tells you to do and everything will go just fine. Carnival Ron, during the government shutdown in my area, a 60 count of eggs increased to $27. See, that seems to be getting up there a little bit. Mike Shaw TV, Costco is an hour from me in rural Iowa. <laughs> Make the run once a month or two. 
When I was growing up in the bush in Western Australia, we lived about an hour and a quarter from Perth, which is the nearest capital city. And um, we all used to go, mum and dad and all the kids used to pile in the Mitsubishi Star Wagon and make that drive every second month. And we would stock up something crazy. But then we used to grow a lot of, we had a, a massive orchard with about 200 fruit trees. We grew all of our veggies we lived on a farm so there would be you know cows and sheep and whatnot but everything else we used to do that every couple of months uh carnival dog sitter betty becky i ate more fat for sure hardly ever ate beef before carnival yeah melissa my fat intake has increased for sure try to do 90 10 wow fine it's really helping with the arthritis Interesting, yeah, fats, there's no inflammation with fats, so that, that does make sense. Uh, Mike Short TV, do you have a farmer there to get your beef from? Yeah, I, this is one of the things that I wish that I lived near a farmer. I'm a bit jealous of Kerry from Homestead Howe, where he lives right, right next door to a farmer, where he can get um, farm direct meat from. Yeah, I never used to cook uh, chicken with butter Ron, and it was actually something that Melitza Coppers Kitchen told me. Well, she didn't tell me, but it was just an idea I got from her. Is she added in uh, butter into bone broth, and then I thought, oh, I wonder if I could just, I just, yeah. and it just makes everything so much better, doesn't it? You just add it in, and it's beautiful. It, at least when I uh, pressure cook it, this makes such a difference. I hope for all I take eggs out the night before I put them in the microwave overnight with the night light on, which keeps the microwave interior warm. The next day, eggs are warm. They crack so much easier when warm. <laughs> that's a great tip. I never, I never, yeah, that's, what a great tip. Thanks for that. Crypto Carnival. I have NY strip for lunch and ribeye for dinner. 2,000 calories, 144 grams of fat, 193 protein a day. On my 10th month, never felt better. Load the freezer with either on sale. You're nice and simple. That's good. You don't have to think. And do you find that you uh, do you feel like you might be getting sick of that, or is it something that you always look forward to every day? I find this people find this fascinating, but especially non carnivores, and they go, "Don't you get bored with what you're eating?" I said, "No way." In fact, there's you go from feeling like maybe you will get bored, and then you realize, "Oh, I'm not actually getting bored." And then you go, "Wow, I'm really looking forward to this," and it doesn't seem to matter. It's like your body just it works so well when you eat this way that it just craves more of the same and it's just so easy mentally it's just it's just a walk in the park right uh Mike Shaw TV there are some local butcher shops can't afford half a cow yeah I'm the same and and in fact I couldn't even fit half a cow in my fridge and freezer I've only got a small one less junk more health welcome hi everyone six months carnivore today feeling great good for you well done six months good job did you have any you know, what were, you, what were your slip-ups like along the way? Because everyone has them. If you don't, I'd be surprised. And did you find you just, okay, well, <laughs> that didn't really work out. Start again, start again, the same day or the next day. Yeah, absolutely outstanding. One hope for all. Fat is slippery, sugar is sticky. Think about what those do in your arteries. Do you want sticky? I think not. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so what else can we talk about? Guys, I've got um, I've got a couple of things in the pipeline as far as videos go. I think the two most, the best, the best well-received videos I've had was the one about how to get started uh, on the carnival diet and the one which was about how you're probably going to fail on the carnival diet. They seem to be the ones that resonated the most, but... I'd be interested in hearing what people would like to see and I can sort of put my content around that and I'm always open to ideas, no matter how crazy they may seem. Crypto carnival, never bored, never longer hungry, easy to follow, lost any emotional attachment to food. That's a really important one. An emotional attachment to food, isn't that liberating? And isn't it funny how when you have an emotional attachment to food, at least in my experience, I didn't know that I had that. And then, and then I realized that I had it and then I go, and then I had to sort of get to the point where I didn't have it. And yeah, it's, it's very liberating. 
It's not to say that it doesn't occasionally surface, but it's definitely almost a non, a non, it, it's something that doesn't really exist anymore except on rare occasions. And it's, yeah, you spend less time and money focused on food, more energy than I know what to do with. <laughs> Good for you. That's such a great, great, great story. Uh, early this month, wrong restaurant, gained six pounds. <laughs> wow. So you had one meal at a restaurant and then that threw off for a little bit. Mike Shaw TV, day 43, down 12 pounds a little bit. It's a start. Yeah. Is that your only goal, Mike, was to lose lose a few pounds? Or did you have some other uh, things with your health that you wanted to improve as well? Less junk, more health, all gone now. Still lost five pounds for the month. Well done. Yes, Melitz is a big fan of the dishwashing philosopher. Uh, school holidays, so I'm going to be... I'm going to have small children with me all day today. Yeah, I may be, I may be able to get one out this week. I'm, I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself there because that doesn't really work. But if not this week, there will definitely be an episode of Dishwashing Philosopher next week. Uh, crypto Carnival. I'd be a mock conversation with a concerned family member or friend who thinks you're slowly killing yourself on this diet. That's a good idea. And it's actually one that I thought of, uh, yeah, having the two characters... I think you guys have probably seen the characters, the two characters with the Aussie slang, the one with the glasses and the one without. Um, yes, yeah, so I actually, I've got that idea written down. I think that's a good one. And I'm going to put some more thought into that. So appreciate that. Omed. Yeah, it's, uh, I just like to eat. So one meal a day isn't often enough for me, but usually two is, two is okay because I don't have the first one till like one thirty, and then and then eat later in the in the evening. That seems to work well. Does everyone here uh, fast? I know some people do, some people don't. I always eat intermittent fast, so I don't. I don't particularly like to do long fasts. I just think they just require too much mental bandwidth for me. So I find that if I finish eating like six thirty, seven, and then just don't eat again till twelve thirty one the next day, that's a pretty decent intermittent fast, and yeah, that works for me. Carnival on. I was an ocean, emotional eater. If I emotionally need to eat, I'll grab a steak or poultry. Stay, a steak or poultry. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> yeah. What's my go-to food if I want to emotionally eat? Well, I still I still can emotionally eat a little bit with cheese. And I actually had some cream yesterday, which I hadn't had for ages, just to see how it'd feel. And it's so addictive, that stuff for me. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I just got to, if I'm going to have it, then it's once. And then I've just got to stay away from it for a couple of weeks. And I'm curious as to whether that addictive thing about cream, I think it's just something about the texture and the taste. It's just so good. And it's just one of those things that if I have it in the fridge, I'm going to binge on it. So I just can't have it in the fridge, unfortunately. Have to go with butter instead. Mike Shaw TV, my main goal is weight loss. I'm finding like, I like the carnival calm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, carnival calm is a good way to describe it. Also the mouth health, yeah. No, it, I think, I, my guess is that the bacteria that causes gum disease relies on carbohydrates and can't survive if you don't have them. And I've found, I used to have bleeding gums a lot and never, no matter how much I floss, if I, cause I have to floss a lot, I'm sure most of you do, especially when you're eating steaks and things like that, it gets stuck in your teeth and yeah no gum disease whatsoever which is pretty cool no gas is another handy thing absolutely well let's uh, why don't you do a cross run once a month or every other month for the kids like when you were little yeah i could do that i guess i've never been to costco it be, would be just interesting to go it could be an adventure that's a good idea i'm gonna i'm gonna take that on board melissa thanks for that Carnival Ron started Carnival because of my autoimmune issues. The 35 pound weight loss was a bonus. Great. Which what particular autoimmune issues did you have, Ron? I'm curious. Mike Shaw TV. I did a two day sardine fast. Video tomorrow. Pretty easy though. <laughs> a sardine fast. Never heard of that one. Uh, fat fast. I have done a fat fast. Hello Kitty. Welcome. I normally do 17 hours time restriction feeding on weekdays. Yeah. So you you um, relax that on the weekends. 
KM Waff Wilson. Smiley face back at you. Let's say, I'm going to do a thrill four day fast after every 20 pounds lost to get the autophagy. Interesting. I do believe that if you listen to what Dr. Ben Bickman has to say, that the autophagy kicks in even when you're not, like if you're just not eating carbohydrates. It's a fasting mimicking diet and it does kick in your auto autophagy there as well. But yeah, if, if, you're, uh, if you're one that doesn't mind doing a three or four day fast, I'm sure it will come up then. One I hope for all Coppers ki Carnival Kitchen also. What about the plaque and tartar that sugar leaves on your teeth, which can get to your heart, give you a heart attack? Carnivals have no plaque on their teeth. Good point. Yeah, I hadn't thought about the plaque. I think I still did get some, but I haven't been to the dentist for like six months. So maybe that's a some leftover plaque from before I started on Carnival. Beef for cat for tuna. My new air fryer has a dehydrate and rotisserie function. Yes, mine does too. The dehydrate function was one I didn't know about until my son's told me about it. Susan, I don't have bleeding gums when I brush anymore either. Yeah, it's such a good thing. <laughs> okay, well, let's film the Costco run. Yeah, great video. You can incorporate a game in the little lilies looking for things. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't put the lilies on social media, but I think I could probably put parts of them on there. So that's a good idea. Beef for cat for cheetah. Dr. Chafe is right about fat and BMS. I find that all to be true for me. Fat and electrolytes can easily loosen my stools. Yeah. Definitely doesn't require plant fiber, as a lot of people think. Uh, Crypto Carnival. Our idea. Have some content on common and uncommon issues that get resolved in Carnival. Mine was severe carpal tunnel pain in both hands that are completely resolved. Interesting. Yeah, I have the same issue. The carpal tunnel is like from here down to here. And it is definitely... Uh, a lot better than it's ever been for years. I would say it's completely gone. But the, what I've really noticed is that it recovers very, very quickly. So even if I do have a pretty intense day on the computer and they're a bit sore, it, it instead of me having to wait till the next day before I can feel like I don't need to take Panadol or something, then it's just within a couple of hours, they're back to normal again. So that's definitely an improvement. And it's a very slow process to heal, I'm finding, but it's definitely getting better. Sandra Johnson, welcome. Have you watched Dr. Kilt's interview with Fred Hahn about slow burn exercises? I need an exercise like this, having a few impairments, hip, back, etc. All yours are high power, can no do. Yes, I know. I'm, I, don't ha I haven't done anything for uh, slow movements, but there's always l low uh, impact versions. And when I do a new workout video, I don't know when that will be, but when I do one, I'll include some low impact ones. So for example... Walking is one of the best. I would, if you've got um, a few impairments, then just walking is great. If you are sort of stuck indoors, then something else you can do is uh, just sit on the end of your bed and just stand up and then sit back down. Stand up, sit back down. That's another one. A um, couple of ideas for you there. Carnival Ron, I used two inhalers, was keto for three months, but still need the inhalers. After six months of Carnival, I no longer need the inhalers. That's great. Uh, how long did you have the inhalers for? Susan, I fast every day after supper until 12, 1 or 2 the next day. Yeah, it seems to be something that a lot of people do. Uh, less junk, more health. I needed to improve severe sleep apnea, pre-diabetic, high blood pressure and weight. Great. Something you can cure with Carnival for sure. Ah, interesting. Crypto Carnival. When I went full lion diet, then carpal tunnel finally resolved completely. So lion diet is still one that I'm keeping in my back pocket. <laughs> I'm not quite prepared to go there yet. Um, but yes, it's something that's interesting. If I, don't, if I can't fully resolve it with what I'm doing, then yeah, I mean, I suspect that there is a little bit of information from dairy. I'm just not prepared to give it up quite yet. But yeah, appreciate that. Carnivore dog sitter, Becky, I started walking today, starting slow, but it went well. Yeah, walking is great. It's it's weight bearing. <clears throat> Listen, there's something like, just about uh, our bodies and, and muscles. It's absolutely imperative that we work to maintain and in fact increase the amount of muscle tissue that we have on our bodies. Um, muscle tissue 
and lean muscle mass is such an important aspect of our metabolic health, believe it or not. So muscles are a store for uh, glycogen and uh, they're like an energy storage. So they help moderate and uh, are a really important equation in the whole metabolic health area. And Dr. Ben Bickman talks a lot about this, but also it just prevents you from becoming frail. So even if you all you can do at the moment is walking, then start with that. But also just do push-ups against the wall. If, you, if you're like really kind of don't have a much upper body strength and you can't even do push-ups, don't do them on your knees. Just slightly lean against the wall and push up against the wall. Start there. But do something for your upper body and your lower body every day to actually help start to increase your muscle mass because there's so many of us so many of us are sedentary and uh, if you can add muscle mass on your body that also it consumes calories it helps regulate your metabolic health and it just makes you a very a more able and less frail person and i just can't encourage you enough to do that and it doesn't i don't care how old you are you can always do something so walking push-ups against the wall start there start doing those things and then start increasing your strength then you'll get so many health benefit benefits from that as well and then just make that part of your life i can't encourage you enough to do that uh thank you <laughs> melissa yeah i don't i don't generally encourage people to like and subscribe etc but if you do find my content useful i'd certainly appreciate that carnival ron yes i've seen your uh what you do yeah you're a, you're an inspiration mate and you walk about 40 minutes yeah so same here yeah gym gym or boxing and then the walk is a daily thing i think i only miss like uh probably miss sundays it's not always easy to get outdoors but it also is good because you can get some sun if you can go walking outdoors as well uh <clears throat> charge of mopar the 40-year carnival yes welcome well it's extremely encouraging to see all the new people discovering the carnival way of life yes you're, you're no longer the outlier, mate. Less junk, more health. Sleep apnea is so much better. Blood pressure meds are down to every three days. A1C is back down to 5.6. Great. I bet you can't wait till you don't have to take the blood pressure meds anymore. If you find, once again, I'm not a medical doctor, but if you find that you, when you get up quickly, you feel a bit lightheaded, uh, I've heard that that is, that is the sign where you get to talk to your doctor about backing off on the blood pressure meds because you're, they artificially lower your blood pressure and then through what you're eating, your blood pressure comes in as well. And if you're getting lightheaded, it would indicate that your blood pressure is low and so the blood's not getting pumped quickly enough to your brain and that gives you the lightheadedness. So you may be able to go without those if you've reached that point. Anyone else, ex uh, Leyland Schult, welcome. Anyone else experienced biphasic sleep on carnivore? Uh, occasionally I have a nap if I have a short sleep. Sometimes I like to get up early, like 3.30, 4 a.m. Uh, YouTube deleted my comment. <laughs> Maybe it said something naughty. There are some filters in place and uh, just try rewording it. I think some of the filters are a little bit restrictive, but that might be why. If you actually subscribe to my channel, I'll set you up so that you, uh, all the people who regularly comment, I'd set them up so that their comments are automatically approved and they, they go outside the filter. So just make sure you do that and I'll find you and just comment on one of my videos and I'll, I'll add you in as an approved person. Carnival Dog Cedar Becky. Yes. Good. Let me know how you go with that. Mike Shaw TV, uh, five hours, then I'm up. Grab an knife if I can later. Yeah, it's interesting how many people actually like to sleep less or don't need to sleep as much after they go to Carnival. Crypto Carnival, what is your thoughts on DEXA scans to track visceral fat, lean muscle mass and bone density, worth it or a waste of dollars? I don't know. I don't think it's a waste of money. I think if that's something that you're interested in and I like data as well, then... Yeah, go for it. It's it gives you something to look at. It's I think it's a in, very interesting data point to see uh, 
you know, where you've got adipose tissue and how that changes over time. Um, it's not something that I'm looking at doing at the moment, but I'm definitely interested in doing it. So if you do do it, then you should post a video about it or let us know about it. I'll be interested to see how that goes. <laughs> Carnival run at the gym. I walked 10 minutes backwards. Round a circle? Oh, no, you'd probably do that on a... Um, on a walking machine, right? Whatever they're called. B for cat for tuna. Resistance bands and varying strength can help with those mobility issues. Great idea. If you still have issues with simply standing up, you can work out many muscles, just change the position. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, if there's one, there's one channel, um, what's her name? Uh, Renouf. I think it's Renouf. R-E-N-O-U-F. I forget her first name. She's a very very popular German influencer. She has a lot of high intensity videos, but she also has a lot of low intensity ones as well. Uh, Mike Shaw TV, I need to join the gym. I think that's my October challenge. Yeah, I mean, join the gym. Personally, I, I don't go to the gym because I've got a gym in my friend's garage. But even when I didn't go there, I think the most important thing is to create a habit. So... You've got to have a habit that you can maintain when you are nowhere near a gym. The only thing I don't like about going to the gym is that if you are away somewhere, then it's kind of like, oh, I need to go to the gym to be able to do exercise. Whereas if you have something that you can do anywhere, then you can choose to go and do it at the gym or you can do it at home. So that's where the calisthenics are really handy. So, you know, air squats or just squats against the wall, push-ups or push-ups against the wall. If you are strong enough to do things like chin-ups then and you can find a place to hang then do those um you know uh twists if you sit down and lean back a little bit twist from side to side that works your stomach muscles they're all things that you can do without the gym so i'd say don't and also don't wait till tomorrow start today do something today why wait Uh, let's see. <laughs> I want to hope for all now. They thought it was spam because I was talking about air fryers. <laughs> uh, beef for cat fettuccine. Does anyone else now have almost instant issues with consuming plants? My issue is that my doctors keep wanting me to back on thyroid meds and other plant derived meds, and there isn't enough Zyrtec. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I, I would say there's two things I'll say about that. Uh, Dr. Berry's got some great resources. I don't know whether you have to be in his paid community to get access to these. Uh, it's about um, when you get labs done and talking to your doctor about those labs and being armed with knowledge that your doctors may not have to be able to have a conversation with them rather than them coming from the fact, well, I know everything and you don't know anything, so you just got to listen to what I do. And I would say if you've got a doctor like that, maybe it's time to find a new doctor. But I think if you can... If you can find a doctor who supports, uh, who understands and supports the carnival way of eating, then that might be also a good idea as well. And yeah, I find that if I add plants in or have something vegetarian, it's, it just doesn't work. So, um, you know, you've got to, you just have to, you've got to take control of your own health. Like if you've, if what your doctor is doing for you isn't working for you, then you really do have to consider finding a new doctor or just push back and say, no, that does, does, doesn't work for me. And there's got to be another solution. And let's have another look at the labs, whatever. Like, I guess grow your knowledge so that you can then have a, a well-argumented conversation with your doctor. Don't be afraid to push back on them. They're just somebody who's, who's learned certain things at medical school that doesn't make them an expert, in my opinion. Uh, NSV, I tried on a button-down blouse that I bought a couple of years ago, but it hasn't fit me. Today it fit me perfectly. Go, Susan. Well done. That's awesome. <laughs> it might be something else. There's words like uh, depression and other things. I think there's a couple in there that can get caught up. And yes, sometimes they do, they do glitch. And then sometimes I accidentally press the, um, the button that says uh, put user in timeout. <laughs> I've done that before too. Which, you know, obviously I try not to do. 
Yeah. Uh, beef for cat for chin. I'm reacting badly to plant derived prescription meds. How important is treating infections and how much will heal? Been progressively more carnivore since May 22. Yeah. You know, listen to your body. Your body's the perfect machine. It will tell you what you need to do. Trust in that. Trust in that over everything else, I say. Knees over toes is a uh, guy is amazing for good exercise. Okay. There you go. That's his, that's his channel. Mike Shaw TV, I played corner and safety 100 years ago in high school. Lots of running backwards. Yeah. <laughs> we used to, oh, we call it a different name. I remember that game. All right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up, actually. I've got to get ready to head off to the gym. Thanks all for joining me. I didn't expect there'd be so many people would actually turn up. I appreciate everyone's support for the channel. I'm glad you're here. I'm very happy to be part of this community and you guys are also part of that because it's like I say, it's not my community, it's our community and I'm really looking forward to seeing it grow more. Uh, Quark, thanks for joining in. Doing intermittent fasting for years already. Carnival diet since the start of September and I experienced huge fatigue after my meal if I eat at noon. I tried one meal a day but hard to eat enough. I think just listen to your body, mate. That you've got, um, you're going to go through different transitions, and if your body is saying, "Well, I've I've eaten enough," we'll do that. You, it may be because there's resources are being devoted to healing. That's the way I look at it. And uh, when I first started, I wanted to eat a lot, and then I went through a phase where I didn't need to eat as much. I didn't really even think about food very much. And there's these various stages of healing that occur. So, as I say, your body is a perfect machine. It will tell you what you need to do if you listen. And don't try to force anything, just allow things to unfold and take it one day at a time. That's my advice. Uh, all right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all for joining in today. I appreciate all of your uh, feedback. And I'll see you guys on the channel or I'll see you at the next stream. I'll do what I'll do these every week, but it won't it'll usually I'll do this at 9 a.m. my time, which is in a couple of hours' time. Talk to you guys later. Bye for now.